Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. Hello my friends, today it is time to bring you some more spicy, steamy, smutty romance wrecks. And I'm so excited to do that because today I will be collabing again with Balesa Boutique to do a massive toy giveaway for everyone who signs up. And I will get back around to that in just a minute. Um, but yeah, I love doing these just random collective spicy rec videos. You know, just last week we did ones that were centered on like kink recommendations. This one today, I have some new and old recommendations that I wanted to share. Some that uh, I just looked at my shelves and I was like, what are some that I haven't talked about in a while? Also some that I have some very pretty special additions for that I wanted to show off. Um, and that always makes me really happy when I have some of those for you. Um, some that I got as gifts, some that I've been hunting down, particularly one of these, like I have been on the hunt for it. It's one of my unicorn books, so I'm very excited about it. But uh, yeah, these books are meant to help keep you happy during maybe you have a rainy weekend coming up or something like that. And someone who also wants to help keep you really happy is of course, Balesa. I'm thrilled again to be working with Balesa to again, give out free vibrators and gift cards for toys for everyone who signs up, okay? So if you haven't heard about Balesa, they are a bi women company that does all things sexual wellness. Their mission is to empower everyone to embrace, explore, and celebrate their sexuality. And to do that, I have a few toys to show off for you. Now, these are ones that I got, you know, of course, last time before we did this. And, you know, I've definitely been using them a little bit since we got them. So I have even more feelings about them than I did before. But let's start out with what I think is maybe the most, like, versatile toy that they have. Um, and that is, of course the Demi Wand, which they all come in these cute little cases here. This is a very pretty little yellow one. It is butter soft, you guys, I'm telling you. So this is waterproof and this case is chargeable. It is, you know, great for like discreet uh, bringing with you. Here's a little charging port in here, just clicks right in and there you go. This one is, works on all body types. So it's orgasms for everyone, of course. It is whisper quiet. This one's nice and silent. It's compact and it's very flexible. It gets in all the places you need it to get. And this one has just been a real dream. It's also super easy, cleanable, whether you have like cleaning wipes or you want to take it in the shower, like I said, because it's washable. So this one is excellent. The Demi Wand is that one. Then we get a little more expressive here. We have the Air Vibe. This one is so fun. I love the shiny gold on this. So again, same compact case here, rechargeable. This one is very silent. And this one also has the dual stimulation. It has a flexible neck to get where you want. We have the Air Vibe here and we have the vibrating here. You're able, it has two motors. So either side or both you can have going. It's quite the fun time here. Love this. Is beautiful so this one will give you a good time there as well and then I saved my favorite for last okay I'm just I had to say it here there is the pebble which was the one I was most excited to get and I think it is just absolutely stunning it has like that rose gold here so this one is the ergonomic fit right it's nice and tiny it fits right in your hand I have really big hands too but it's great for like, you know, all size little hands here. This one also has tool motors. So like this end vibrates as well as you have like um, the suction going on right here. Um, they're controlled independently. So it's hard to see with my lighting. It's hard to see with my lighting, but there's buttons for each side of this one. Um, and there's no annoying pattern modes. It's just different levels of vibration on both ends of those. Again, you can have both going at the same time. And this one, like I said, this is my favorite. This one has traveled with me a few times since then. And again, it fits right back in here. Perfect for bringing with you. And I've slipped it right into like my makeup case and everything and it's perfect. So like I said, um, there will be a link in my description and in the pinned comment for you to sign up for the giveaway. Um, I've signed up for this giveaway myself before, as I, I said that before when other um, creators were running this. So you'll just put in your email and then they'll give you either 
you know, you're going to enter for whichever. Okay, thank you to Balesa for supporting this year. And uh, let's get into the recommendation. Okay, let's get into some of these. So like I said, I have some new ones and some that range all over the place. So let's get started with some recent releases um, that are from some smaller authors that I really want you to go give some love to. And like always, I'll have links down below to these books. You can get them right from Amazon. Um, some of these authors even have their Etsy stores if you'd like to go there to support them that way. But I just, I love to support small authors who are writing the spicy books that we know and love, right? So first up we have Forgive Me For My Sin by Angel Anders. So this one is actually a priest romance and this is a debut romance for this author, okay? And I was very impressed. So I spoke about this one in my last weekly wrap up and this one is, you know, it's taboo, it's forbidden. It does also have some cheating involved in it. But the way that it was handled, like you find out on the first page that the heroine is actually being cheated on by her husband and so she wants to find a way to get out of this, right? Um They'd signed a prenup, but like she has money too, so it's not like she would lose everything if they were to get this divorce. Um, and he has a lot of connections through his church, and so she ends up going to mass one day just to kind of um, like brainstorm and like think about how to get out of this. And when she does, it happens to be the first service that's being done by a new whose name is Father Lachlan. Now, Father Lachlan, he's been a priest for a while. He has a lot of demons in his past. That's why he became a priest. Um, he has some uh, deviancies that he's tried to give up by, you know, giving himself to the Lord. Um, but when he sees, uh, I believe her name is Avery. Yeah, her name is Avery. He knows that he's in trouble. <laughs> and they end up getting paired together to work on this gala and the closer that they get to each other the more it becomes clear that they're not going to have such an easy time staying away from each other. So things are going to escalate. But what I really love about this one is that it doesn't have the same kind of angst as some other taboo priest romances I've read before. You know, obviously that is a touchy subject. This one's not going to be for everybody. But I love the way that she handled this in that there isn't a lot of guilt brought to it. Like once Father Lachlan and Avery decide that they want each other, they go about doing what they have to do to make it happen. They're not making each other feel guilty. They're not really feeling guilty about it. Father Lachlan is like, if I'm having feelings for this woman, then maybe I'm not in the right career. Maybe I need to change what I'm doing. And Avery, who is already trying to leave her husband, is just trying to find a way to do it in the least messy way possible. So I thought this was really great. And again, once the spice gets going, this one was, mighty fine this one was mighty fine these two were fire together and i highly highly recommend then we have all my love by daisy jane which you know i have been talking about in so many videos but when we're talking about a smutty spicy steamy good time one that you're probably going to need toys for it is going to be all my love by daisy jane okay which is funny because this one is like a slow burn between the two of them but our heroine is actually a bit of a stalker she's been following and well not even following because they're neighbors but she has been wanting this man for ages dolly or dahlia she has been wanting hudson for years and now she's finally making her move and making it known and so she does some very interesting things to put herself in um the right position to make that happen let's just say and our hero hudson he's a cowboy he's a single dad he was cheated on by his wife and so he hasn't had much time for women anymore and now it's time for him to you know move on and dolly's there to help him do that and once these two get together the spice there's almost spice on every page once they get together like i said it's a slow burn up until it happens because hudson needs to be a bit uh convinced that he should be with her but once we get to that point it's just full steam ahead man like it is crazy it's so good so anyway i just really love these two and the spice in this one like i said if you watch one of my other reviews you know this one has um just so many kinks in it i know i recommended it in the last spicy one but i'm gonna keep pushing it because I want everyone to read this and I want everyone to find Daisy Jane so much so that I'm bringing up another book of hers as well which is The Man I Know. So this one I've also talked about because uh, y'all you need to be reading Daisy Jane if you like kinky smutty books. 
every single one of them of hers I read has been fantastic. So this one is actually a married couple who starts exploring some new sexual things together. So they've been together for over a decade. Um, they have a great relationship, but our hero has been keeping a secret about some of the sexy things that he likes. Um, he's been afraid to kind of share them because he didn't know if he would be accepted if he shared them with her. And so he really has kind of held himself back in that way. And when she catches him indulging in some of that, um, you know, funny that we be talking about self-pleasure at the beginning of this because that is something that he's doing and some of the fantasies he's imagining, he just can't believe that his wife would ever want to do with him. But when she catches him, instead of being horrified like he was afraid she would be, she really is more like, well, why did you feel like you couldn't share this with me? Like, you know, let's explore this. If you're into it, let's see if I like it too. If I'm not, we'll see what we can do about it. And I just, I love the openness that's shown in here. And I love the grace that she gives him and also how she's like, you know, I might really be into this. Let's do it. And I just, I love that. So this one's really great. Um, if you don't want some of the taboo elements that are in uh, all my love. This one is much less taboo. It's a married couple. They're in love with each other. Nothing they're experimenting with is bad or illegal or wrong. Um, not that it isn't all my love, but you'll get it. That one's very intense. That one's over the top where this one is like, they're just experimenting with BDSM together and it's fun to watch them figure it out together. It's beautiful. Okay. Then we have another kinky fun one. The, uh, Lights Out by Navessa Allen. Sorry, I was like, I don't have a copy of that one. What am I doing? It is Lights Out by Navessa Allen. So this was a recent release. This one's also a, kind of a stalker romance, but it's also a masked man romance. And it's also a bit of a comedy. I've shared this, like, if you love Butcher and Blackbird, there are elements in this one that I think you'll really like. So I want you to give it a go. Um, this is about Josh, who he is roommates with a guy who has been like friends with benefits with the heroin. I know it's a weird mix. It's a weird match how it all happens. But yeah, they had been, um, they had been friends with benefits, which was kind of cool. And, uh, <laughs> and he has been making these thirst traps basically on TikTok and she has been following them and he knows she's been following them and he is ready to make his move and make it known to her that he's into her too. And when she finds out that it's him, she's, you know, not as disturbed as he was afraid she would be. And they're both into a lot of the same things. So this one, again, has a lot of kinks, has a lot of fun things. Check the trigger warnings for it. But again, there are some dark things in this one, but there is a type of humor that goes with it that doesn't make it feel as like intense or, or, or too much like it might be in some. So there you go. That's my recommendation for that one. Then there also is Jumping the Shark by Ash Raven, if you want to get a little bit alien kinky with this one. This one's about novella length, and I just had the best time with this one. So much fun. Um, this one is a alien uh, first date, like kidnapping on the first date thing. So these aliens are using a human dating app to help them be paired with people that would be good match for them and then when our hero who is as we said a shark alien goes on this date he realizes the heroine is his mate and is like full steam ahead this is my girl we're making it happen and he takes her back to his own planet and she doesn't really have much that she's leaving behind so it's not too much of a uh travesty for her to take up with her alien bow as it were and there involves two cocks in this one. There's toys used in this one. There's a little bit of daddy doming going on. Nothing too intense at all. But it was really hot and I just love this. I want to read more from Ash Raven for sure because this was a delight. Okay, let's get into my stack that I have here in front of me. So I have a new release here. There was The Home Wrecker by Sarah Kate. Um, this is book two in her Good Brothers series. Um, this one is an MMF and this one involves um, our hero Caleb and his wife who they've been married for a while. They really love each other but they're just they've lost a bit of the spark in their relationship. And then we have Dean who he is actually a sex worker and he is um, friends with 
Caleb's brother. He like works for Adam kind of at the at the club. Um, the club is where he chooses to meet his clients. It, it makes it kind of like a safer place to meet, right? Which I really like that. Um, Dean is going through a lot. His father is very sick. And at the beginning of this book, his father accidentally burns their home. And so it's time for his dad to go into an assisted living place, which his dad is okay with. He wants to take the burden off of his son. And so, but Dean doesn't have a place to stay. And so Adam, again, the brother of Caleb suggests that they have a guest house that they were looking to rent out anyway, so why not let Dean stay there? Now, the thing that Adam didn't know <laughs> is that Caleb actually knows Dean very well because he used to date secretly one of their brothers who has disappeared. Like, we haven't seen him. He was kind of chased out of the home when they were young for uh, being gay. And uh, Dean, who is bisexual, he had been dating him. And so when things didn't work out with that brother, he very much blamed Caleb for it. So now K now Dean, you know, wants to, he hates Caleb for this. And Caleb is very wary of Dean. But Caleb's wife, um, Briar, she's very interested in Dean. And it ends up where it goes, only Sarah Kate could take you on this journey. So this one does have a bit of cheating as well, but the way that it happens in here, it's difficult to explain <laughs> because I didn't feel bad about it, how it happens. Even though it's cheating, they are also like aware of it very quickly and we pretty soon, all of us are doing things together. So here for it, all about it, let's do it. Okay, then I wanted to show off my God of Fury. This is just so beautiful. Um, I absolutely love this series and I'm getting all of the hardcovers collected, which is great. Um, and this one is book five in the series. Yes, you should probably start at the beginning, but for a smutty wreck, I wanted to recommend this one. This is an MM romance between Nikolai Solikov and uh, Brand Brandon, Bra Brayden, Brandon, I always forget, Brandon. Um, King and he has never looked at men before but he also maybe feels like he's asexual because he also has to kind of force himself to be intimate with his female partners it's not something that he enjoys and he's always wondered like what's wrong with him and so and again not that being asexual would be wrong with him but he's seen you know everyone else in his life be very sexually active as young people and he's not feeling that and then he catches Nikolai's eye and Nikolai he knows that there's more to his lotus flower than everyone else is seeing and he wants to get under his skin both figuratively and literally and so he goes about doing that and I love how Nikolai just does not let um, Brandon look away from the changes he's feeling and the way that Nikolai is awakening in him and there are also some things about Brandon that even the people closest to him haven't realized and Nikolai sees them and he just it's interesting because it's not like he's all like, oh, I just want to help. He wants to figure it out. And in doing the I want to figure it out, he is helping more than he could ever know. But things are going to get darker before they get better. So this book, like, I cannot wait for God of War, which I'm so happy it got moved up. It's going to be coming in June now instead of I think it was supposed to be August or like, I don't know when it was. It was way far away. Um, and I'm just so excited. That one's going to be pink. It's going to be pink. And we're finally going to get... Eli and Ava's story. But anyway, you should catch up on the series while you can. And if you love these beautiful copies, whether these ones or the um, man covers that you've seen, these are going to be going away very soon because she's going to be getting published with Bloom, which is wonderful, but there will be different covers. So make sure you grab these if you can. Okay, then we have another recent release, which was Sir Yes Sir by L.L. Ash. This is another small author that I really, really love. I have been reading her books for a couple years now. So this one is the third book in Seduction series, Sophisticated Seduction, but none of them are connected. So you can read this one just as is and not, you literally aren't missing anything. They're only connected because they're forbidden age gaps. So this one is a dad's best friend. This is a military man. He has some PTSD and he's injured in the beginning of this. And because he doesn't really have any family to speak of, his 
buddy from the military invites him to come convalesce at his home. Now, um, our hero, Ash, doesn't think he's going to be there that long. He's planning to get right back in to the military as soon as he can, um, not realizing that that is a bit of an unrealistic dream based on his health and based on um, just the injuries he has mentally. But he's there. And then we have Freya, who is the daughter of this buddy. And she is so sassy. I just love her. She, I think, is 21, turning 22. Um, and she's always thought that Ashton was hot and now he's living in her home because she lives with her parents mostly because they like make her live there and she works for the family business and part of the reason she doesn't have her own place to live is also that her dad pays her a little less than she's worth to keep her around but no he's a good dad I know that makes him sound a little shady but her parents just really love her and so when she starts having feelings for Ashton it could put her in a pretty awkward position with her parents. But again, I love this. I love it. And you should definitely get your hands on it if you can, as soon as you can, because it's amazing. All right, then I wanted to show off another special edition. This is When She Unravels, which I have talked about these books before. Thank you so much to Yari, who sent me this copy from the Dark and Quirky collection. Um, this is the first book in the, um, I actually don't remember what this series is called, that's funny. Um, but this is the first one in a Mafia series. And in this one we have, <clears throat> in this one we have Gemma who in the beginning of this, she has to go on the run because her father had married her off to this horrible man and he is a serial killer. I mean, he is, he is a killer for the Mafia and he takes sadistic pleasure in it. And ever since she married him he has been forcing her to assist him in his kills it's awful and in the beginning of this book we see that she has been pushed to her limit she wants to get away so bad but she's terrified because not only you know would her father not help her because he's the one who put her in this position but she has sisters and she's very worried what what would happen to her sisters if she tried to get away because her husband has threatened them. But in this beginning, he brings a, a young woman in that she is supposed to torture and attack. And she just, she can't do it. It's too much. So instead of torturing the woman, she attacks her husband. I think she gets a shot off. She hits him. I can't remember what happens, but she believes she's left him for dead. Okay. And again, I did just say believed because doesn't do that, but she knows she's able to steal some money from him. She gives some of the money to the woman and they both get out of there. Um, and she ends up in, um, I can't remember if it's in Rome or Sicily or wherever she ends up, but she ends up somewhere and she loses all of the money that she'd taken and she ends up needing to get a job. And so she gets a job at this club, which is being run by a man who is connected to the mafia, but she doesn't know that when she starts there. And so she gets a job as a maid there and she catches his eye and he starts to fall for her. But the thing that she doesn't know and couldn't have known is that he has a younger sister and this younger sister is the woman that she had helped escape. So things are going to get really twisty for her as it goes. And that's the beginning of a wonderful series. I love that whole series. Okay, then we have Surrender by Sam Mariana and Laura Lovett. This is book four in the Coastal Elite series. You can read this as a standalone if you'd like to. Um, Sam Mariano is supposed to have a book coming out before the end of April, which the way she does, she's just going to surprise us with it. And I'm like, what the hell, woman? What the hell? But this one is about Sophie and Sylvan, and they meet at a Halloween party that's happening at his house, and he likes the look of her. Now, Sylvan, though he be a bit of a messed up man, he is from a long line of men who've fallen head over heels at first sight. So when he sees Sophie at this party, he is like, she's going to be mine. And he goes about making it happen, whether Sophie wants it or not, including him getting a little bit physical with her at the party while he's holding her captive. And once she gets away, she's like, motherfucker, I never want to see you again. And she makes a run for it because she's like, this is not happening. No. And yeah, I just love how fierce she is. But Sylvan, she only has stoked his passions even more by doing that. And so he's going to go about making her his. And again, what's bonkers about this one is because not only is he this way, 
you know, in a lot of bully romances or stalker romances where they're younger, he's a college age in this one, you're like, where are the parents? Why aren't the parents doing something? Well, in this one, the reason the parents aren't doing anything is that the parents, again, they're okay with this type of behavior because they've also done this type of behavior before. So, you know, our poor girl isn't going to have so much luck trying to get away because the father is actually like, you're either going to let him love you or I'm going to have to make you disappear because it's not even about like, I don't want you to hurt my baby boy. It's about the fact that, um, you can't know the stuff about us that you know if you're not going to stay. So things get very threatening for Sophie right away. But he was just so charming, okay? He was so charming by the end of it all. So definitely check this one out for sure. I love it. I love it. I love it, okay? All right. Then I wanted to show off one that I love. I've talked about it plenty of times, but... I just love this cover so much. So there's Soul Eater. And this is my um, Renegade Romance cover of Soul Eater. So there's this art. And then there's also Danny and Wynn right here. And then even, even the sign card has them. Isn't that beautiful? So again, this is one I talk about all the time. This one is a monster. It's dystopian. It involves Win the Death Eater, who, or the Soul Eater, which nobody in this dystopian time really knows who or what he is. He's unkillable. He's unstoppable. And what the people don't know is he's actually there for a great and terrible purpose. But the, the last humans that are left are very terrified beings, as they should be, because life is tough where they're from. Um, and we have Danny, who was basically forced into the military because the way that um, life is where they are, if you're not in the military, you're probably going to starve to death. So he's forced to be a part of the military, and he's a grunt for them, basically. I mean, that's what he is. He's a grunt for them, which, you know, is not normally his thing, but he has to do what he has to do, right? And there's one day where his crew is sent to try and stop Win the Soul Eater, and he's getting used as fodder for this attack. And when Win gets a look at him, he decides that there's something special about Danny. And when Win gets taken captive, he falls for this, or so he pretends to. He really gets taken captive because he wants to know more about Danny. And when it's time for the top to blow, on this little, you know, uh, place where the men are keeping him, he offers Danny safe passage with him. And again, he does this because he wants to spend more time with Danny. And uh, um, Danny just can't help but be kind of attracted to this uh, scary, creepy being that he is. And it's beautiful. Okay, we like it. We're here for it. We embrace it. So yeah, this is Soul Eater. And I love this whole series. I hope they do more books in them. But you're in my blood now, Danny Sullivan. I'll always be able to find you. I just love it. Okay, it's so good. Read it. Read it. Okay, and now to wrap up this video, I have one more wreck. And this is the one. This is the one. This is one of my unicorn books, one that I've been trying to get a hold of since I first saw it. I kicked myself that I missed out on it. Um, but I finally got it for a decent price. You guys know I sell some books on Mercari, some books that, you know, when it's time to pass them on because I have too many. Um, and I also look for the special editions that I want. I have a unicorn list of the books that I want. And this book, I have not seen it available for less than $100 ever. Um, I just hadn't. And I finally saw it for like 75 bucks and I also had some credit already, you know, for selling other books. So I got it. And that book is Tempt by Melanie Harlow. This is the Hello Lovely Box special edition that has the clinch cover of these two right here. Look at the little salt and pepper. And then inside it even has like a step back. And it came with the art print, which is a printed version of this. And I got this for, it was on sale for the 75 and then I had some credit. So um, I also just love this. But this is um, 
book four or nine, depending on the way you go it, in the Cloverly Farm series. You could read this as a standalone if you want, but this is an ex's dad romance. Um, and also they meet at a hotel where they're both staying for like work basically. And they end up having one night stand. It, it is hot. It is a hot night. He appreciates every bit of her. They just get it on and it's so good. Um, but they're from different places. So they go back to their life. And very soon after, I think Zach is this hero's name. Sorry, it's been a little hot minute. There's Millie and there's, or Winnie. There's Millie. No, there's Millie and Zach. Yeah. Zach finds out that he has a son that he never knew about. And this son is about to get married. So there was this woman that um, before he was on leave from the military, he was about to join the military. And so he never knew she was pregnant because she was never, never able to get a hold of him. And this woman has passed um, and this son is getting married. And he reaches out wanting to meet his dad, wanting to know him. And so Zach is completely like blindsided by this, but he's like, oh my God, I didn't know. And so he comes out to meet him. And again, the son is getting married and the wedding planner of this wedding is the son's ex-girlfriend. Here she is. And when Zach shows up to all of a sudden be a part of this wedding, he sees the woman of his dreams and all he wants to do is like be with her. But his new son, this is his ex-girlfriend and he's like, I don't want to ruin stuff with this son I've just met. Like, what do I do? Um, and also, again, they do live very far apart, but there's just something about the two of them that even once they're separated again, they have to find a way to be together and it's perfect. So yeah, this is it. I found one of my unicorns and I was able to get it <laughs> and I just love when that happens. I love when it happens because it doesn't always work out that way. So there we go, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this <clears throat> again. <clears throat> I'll have links to all of these books down below as well as see the pinned comment or the link to enter the sex toy giveaway that I'm partnering with Balesa. Thank you so much for Balesa for sponsoring this video. It's a joy to do and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.